I'll wait till 32 to get started here. Miss Gray, you're here. Yay. Yep. I'm not holding my breath that I'll stay the whole time, but I might disappear all of a sudden. Yeah, it's been um more than frustrating today. <laughs> Well, um, just to give everyone a heads up about my environment, I'm in the middle of the living room, and so I have two kids, <laughs> and I'm in the mainstream of everything. So if you hear things or whatnot, don't be shocked, um, but I'm trying to mute myself as much as I can when there's things around me that I can't control. So <laughs> just so you know what's going on with me at the moment so all right well i think it's time to get started so um we're gonna go and do that i'm gonna pull up the warm-up for today and take attendance while we're working on that so okay let me get there and then i'll get started here Okay, here we go. In three, two, one, start. Um, we're going to turn these in today, so make sure, double check that they all have caps and ends and that they're complete sentences so I don't have to play tug of war back and forth with you about um, putting periods and capitalizing and putting in uh, complete sentences. So. That would be ever so helpful if you could do that. You got about a minute left. Do you guys see the warm up? I hope I shared it. Oh, jeez. No, you didn't present it. Hey, Paul, tell me. Can you see it now, Brady? Brady. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, sorry. I guess I thought I had done what I should have done and I didn't. That happens. Make sure you're doing C1, only C1. That's it, culinary. All right, let me see if I can get attendance here.
Okay, so it looks like we're all set with the warm up. So just make sure you turn those in, and then I will grade them this weekend and get them back to you. So you can see how you did. All right, I'm almost done with attendance here. Okay, all right, so we're gonna first talk about um, kitchen safety, and then the other part of our class today will be our demo. Um, I made monkey bread. And so um, I have two videos. One, I'm making it, and then the other one's like a really short clip on me taking it out of the oven and showing it to you. So I'm going to leave you a couple options. So um, if you, you can either make it and do a video of you making monkey bread. Hold on. Someone's going to come in and be really. Okay, sorry. Um, you can make the monkey bread and do a video of it, okay? And I'll talk more about that when we get closer to the middle of the class. Or you can still do the demo page, okay? If you do the, if you decide to do the actual video, then, um, you know, I kind of need you to be working on it while the other people are doing their demo page. So if you are gonna videotape it, I would need to see that you have all the ingredients and then you're gonna leave me to go do it, okay? If that's too much for today and you're like, well, maybe the next time we do a demo, I'll do that or something like that. But that I'm gonna leave that as an option. Okay, so, but for right now, we're gonna talk about uh, kitchen safety and how to be safe in the kitchen. And um, I'll probably stop right around like two o'clock and then uh, assign the demo page. So just so you know. Okay, um, these are on your next assessment. So if you wanna jot down information as we go, you can. I am gonna ask, I'm gonna give just a tiny assignment at the end of this um, where I'm gonna ask you to do something with the notes. So it may be important for you to jot down a little bit as we go through. And um, I'm gonna ad lib a little bit as we talk because there's some things that I wanna add to it. Um, and I hope that I'm not muted. So Miss Gray, will you just unmic and tell me if you can hear me? <laughs> All right. Yes, I can hear you. Sweet. Okay, so let's just get into it with kitchen safety a little bit. Okay. So when we talk about safety in the kitchen, it's we want you to not be harmed by something that you choose to do, okay? So if you're safe, your behaviors are not going to cause you to be hurt. Um, an accident usually is any uh, event that happens that's unsafe behavior. Um, almost all accidents can be prevented if we just take a few minutes to slow down and think about what the consequences might be, okay? Um, we need to also inspect. So checking to be sure hazards don't cause accidents. Like if, you know, there were cords everywhere or something like that, I'm going to show you a little video. I'm going to show you a, a scene like right here. Okay. So here's a scene of a kitchen and um, there's lots of hazards. They, a hazard is something that makes the situation more dangerous than it would have been. Um, so we have like boiling pots on the stove and the handles are facing outward. So like if someone walked by, they could knock it off. Or if a little kid was in the kitchen, they could kind of use that as a lever to pull themselves up. Uh, there's a lot of things on the floor in the kitchen that become obstacles. Um, I have two dogs and invariably when I'm cooking, they're always wanting to lay right down behind me. And so I always have to make sure that I put a barrier up because I have stepped on them and hurt them and then at other times I'm worried about you know what could happen if I um, drop something or something along those lines. Um, we also have a haphazard knife on a cutting board that's just sitting there. Um, we have a lot of cords that are out and not kind of placed behind whatever it is so that would be something that would be easy to be pulled down or um, you know, for you to spill water on the counter and then have an electrical issue, things like that. Um, drawers that get left open, um, you turn around and you run right into the door drawer. I don't know if any of you've ever done that, but I have not in the kitchen per se, but <laughs> let's say at my desk or something like that. So 
um, hopefully we can, you know, dissipate any of the hazards that are in the kitchens. Okay, so basically a definition of a fall is that you have lost your balance, you hit the ground. Um, to prevent falls in the kitchen, always make sure that your floors are clean and dry. Um, you know from last year that we had people that overfilled the sink and we had a waterfall on the side. Um, we had somebody that maybe walked across the floor and dropped their egg or dropped sugar on the floor and how slippery that can be. And if you're not paying close to attention or the person's not cleaning it up right away, you could get seriously hurt. So we always want to make sure that, you know, if something gets on the floor, we clean it up quickly. Um, make sure that you're always walking around the kitchen. When you run, you run into people, you knock things over, you could, you know, slip and fall. Best to not wear heels. You know, sometimes you guys have games or things where you have to dress up. Just try to be aware of those times and maybe you could even switch out your shoes when you come to culinary and then put your shoes back on when you're done. Um, and always look where you're going. That happened a lot too when you're like talking to someone and walking forward and you run smack dab into somebody and whatever you have is all over their shirt or something like that. So just be careful about that. Um, let me just check my notes here. Um, to reach items stored in high places, always use a sturdy stool or ladder. In my case, I use students that are taller than me. That helps out. Um, and then like the picture depicted, always close doors and drawers so um, they don't get in the way of whatever it is you're doing. I'm trying to think if somebody opened a cabinet door last year and maybe ran into it. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that's happened. Okay, burns. So um, it's an injury caused by heat and fire. Um, typically, a first degree burn, does anyone know what that looks like and how they would treat it? What would, you, what would a first degree burn look like, do you think? Anyone can jump in at any time. What does a first degree burn look like? How about Henry? What does a first degree burn look like, do you think? Isn't it just like a like low red bump on your skin? It wouldn't be a bump, it would just be red. Um, and what you would do to treat that is submerge and cover. Um, so like if I was out in the sun and got a sunburn, obviously that's red. Um, and I would put aloe on it or something that's gonna cool the burn and heal my skin, so covering it. But if I like, you know, touch something in the kitchen that made my finger red or something, I would put it under cold water and then I would apply a bandage if I thought I needed to or burn gel or something like that. Um, what's a second degree burn look like? And how would you treat it? How about Carly? What does a second degree burn look like? Is Carly here today? Well, maybe she's not. Oh, maybe not. Okay. How about Jenna? Can, do you have any idea what a second degree burn looks like? Yeah. Um, what? So it would still be red, but you would get like bliss, like blisters and like welts on the skin. Okay, good. Yeah. So it's going to have blisters. And uh, you would treat it the same way, cool it, but if it's the blisters are broken open, remember your first line of defense is now uh, broken and it could let infection in, so you gotta be really careful. So covering it's gonna be key to keeping it uh, sanitary. Um, third degree, fourth degree, those are gonna be um, pretty deep and a lot. some people may actually experience no pain because it does have the ability to uh, singe nerve endings and if your nerves have been harmed, um, then you're not gonna feel a, a typical burn. Uh, burns are probably one of the worst injuries a person could sustain because they are so painful. I mean, if they're getting to the point where they just hit the nerves, then that can be quite uh, excruciating. Um, did I ever talk to you guys last year about my burn on my arm? I'm trying to remember. Do you remember anybody? I think you did. I can't remember exactly. All right. Well, I'll give you a short version then. <laughs> so um, 
I was cooking corn. Does this ring a bell? And I didn't have the correct tap because I was in an unfamiliar place and trying to use somebody else's cooking uh, equipment. And um, I used the wrong lid. Couldn't find the lid. But anyway, long story short, I made almost like a um, pressure cooker. So when I pulled the top off, it exploded and landed all over me. And um, it was a second degree burn because I had blisters and um, it was excruciatingly painful. One of the most pains I think I've experienced, even like childbirth, I think it might have been worse than that. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it was pretty hurt. It was pretty painful. But anyway, um, one thing nice about burns too is they, they can heal quite quickly. So I think maybe within three, four days, I was on the mend, but I did have to go to the burn center. And in order to um, start the healing process with a burn, what they have to do is they have to cut off the dead skin and then they have to scrub the injury because they have to keep it sanitary because most people that have like a really severe burn don't really die from the burn itself. They die from the infection that they get because the first layer of defense has is gone. I mean, this this is a huge organ that covers your entire body. And when it is cut and allows germs to get in, that's when, you know, there can be some serious consequences to that. So um, anyway, so I, I don't love cooking corn. It's not one of my favorite things, um, but you just, you know, be cautious and careful in the kitchen. And if you do suffer a burn, make sure you treat it right away. Um, so to help prevent burns, oven mitts is great. I uh, remember sometimes in our kitchens, we get, they get used a lot and I don't know which ones are going bad. So you would know more than I. And so just let me know that, you know, that one, you know, the padding is becoming worn or it's getting too thin and we'll throw it away and start over. Uh, if it gets soiled with water, know that everything between your hand and the pan is now saturated with water and there's nothing there to protect you. And so it's going to burn you. So what you would do in that case is just put them in the um, laundry and I'll wash them and get them back to you. Um, pot handles. Always make sure you turn those pot handles to the side when you're cooking because of the fact that someone could bump them or a young child could use them as a lever to pull themselves up to whatever it is they think you're doing on the stove. And then that could be a serious injury. Um, hot grease is always an issue. If things are sparking or sp spitting, turn the temperature down or pull the pan off the stove. Okay, you could get a grease fire and grease fires are really bad. Um, a lot of people don't know how to douse them. So you want to basically smother them. And so baking soda, milk, something to smother the flame would be good. If you throw water on it, it's going to ignite it more. And that's when some, again, serious injury could happen because it's going to start flaring up and um, it could flare up on you, basically. Uh, don't wear loose fitting sleeves. Uh, that could catch fire because, um, you know, you get fire on a sleeve and now it's going up your arm and, you know, how do you, it, it could be, you know, pretty bad because your arm is in something and to try to get it out, it could be time consuming. Uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, no fire protection rules. So in our classroom, we have a fire extinguisher and we also have a fire blanket. We could also, we could smother the flame or we could get to the base of it with the uh, fire extinguisher and take care of any and all of those things. Um, let's see, keep flammable material away from the top. So when I think of flammable, I think of like, let's say I bought um, the butter sprays or something like that. That's something that you should spray on the pan, like over the garbage can or over the sink. Never do it over like an open flame or something like that. Um, let's see. Don't throw hot grease. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sorry, my dog just got in my cord. <laughs> okay, that scared me. Okay, so where was I? Um, oh yeah. So don't throw hot liquids into plastic liners or plastic garbage cans because you can melt them. Um, we have that in our, in our classroom. Remember, I would always turn the fan on when we were doing things in the oven or on the stove to kind of suck, suck up that, um, that air that's becoming, um, you know, hard to breathe in and it just kind of fills the room. So this kind of sucks all that out. 
Um, that's an exhaust hood. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. I'm just reading my notes. Always make sure your appliances are turned off. That one did happen a lot, quite a bit last year with people leaving and the ovens were still on. Sometimes I told you to turn it, leave them on, but um, sometimes they got left on even though they shouldn't have been. Um, when I, I have gas in my house, so when I set, when I light the gas stove, sometimes I have to do that. I'm going to strike the match first and then I'll light it versus turning the gas on and then lighting it. Not, don't do it in that order. Um, uh, if you smell gas, you're only going to smell gas typically if you have a gas stove, but even in our house, we have gas heat also, so you got to be careful with that. Um, but if you smell it, then we need to get someone there immediately to try to figure out where it's coming from. Okay, so cuts, um, injuries due to breaks in the skin caused by a knife or sharp object. So um, to prevent cuts, use the correct knife for the job. Uh, always cut things on a cutting board. Always cut away from the body. Uh, never pull knives under things. So like if I was cutting like an apple, I wouldn't start under the apple and lift up. I would always cut down. Um, never put knives in the dishwater. So we use knives a few times and you should always leave them on the side of the sink so that um, whoever's washing the dishes doesn't like put their hand in there and get cut and then they can wash it when they're ready. Um, if you drop a knife, don't, you know, some people have this automatic thinking that if I put my foot out to uh, prevent it from like hitting the floor, uh, that would be good. But you know, if it's a knife, you, that's gonna go through your foot or your leg or whatever it is you're trying to throw in front of it. So not a good plan. Um, and then sometimes people wash dishes and break a glass or something, um, don't go searching for it. Okay, we can drain the sink water with some other tool that we don't have to put our hands in there and then hopefully find the glass after the water has dissipated um, to do that. Uh, keep, we'll try to keep our knives sharp. Our knives are pretty sharp, but I always have a knife sharpener um, to sharpen those blades up if need be. Um, peeling, so if we ever peeled something, always peel away from you. Um, Oh, sweep up broken glass immediately. So in one of the classes last year, we had someone that dropped, well, maybe a couple classes actually. Um, we had some broken glass. So just let me know, but be ready to pick it up with the broom. Don't try to pick it up with your hand, okay? Uh, if you feel the need to do that, grab like a, uh, a, a towel or something like that, that you're picking it up with a towel and not your flesh because it's easy for that glass to puncture you. And now we have a further issue on our hand because now you're injured and that's not good, especially in, you know, preparing food. You don't want a hand injury. Okay. So shock, um, basically you get shocked because of electrical equipment, outlets, things like that. So the best thing you can do to try to prevent that thing, prevent that from happening is to pull out cords by the plug, um, not by the cord. I know some of us do that. Sometimes I find myself starting to do that, and I'm like, oh, gosh, pull it from the plug, Zepka. Um, unplug an appliance before washing it. Um, you know, I've heard of people, like, doing waffles and then just, like, throwing the waffle maker in the sink, and it's still plugged in. Not a good plan. Um, I'm a little paranoid when you guys use the hand mixers. I'm always coming around once I see that they're um, – not being used and I just pull those plugs out just because it freaks me out. I don't want anyone getting hurt that way. Um, don't operate appliances with wet hands or don't be standing in wet uh, water or like waters on the floor. It's got to be dry. That's why it's really important when the floor gets wet to really pick it up. Uh, keep appliances turned off when they are not in use. Um, if you have to, like sometimes a cord is separate from whatever equipment you're using, plug it into the equipment first and then plug it into the wall. Don't do it in, in the other order, okay? Um, re, let's see. Um, trying to read my notes here. Okay, I think I hit everything, okay. Uh, poisoning. So obviously you're going to ingest something that's hazardous form of a chemical. Um, lock it up. 
So in our kitchens, I not worried about you ingesting anything, but you know, you are siblings or aunts or uncles or cousins, or you babysit and you just got to be careful and cautious about the things that are in your uh, kitchen because young kids don't know any better and they are just curious little beans and they want to know what's, what it is. Um, so you got to be careful. So always lock up stuff that's hazardous. Most people use under their sink, but again, that's close to the floor where little kids uh, move around. So maybe, you know, while you have young kids in your house, you move that cupboard someplace else or take the chemicals that are hazardous out. Um, always store things in their original containers. Sometimes people want to th- spray, sorry, want to um, pour things into other bottles and things. And it could be concerning if the labels don't find themselves on the bottles and then you're figure, trying to figure out what this is and then you spray it and then it can be hazardous. So just be careful and cautious. Okay, choking. Now, can somebody tell me three things a choking victim can not do? What is a choking victim unable to do? Hello, anybody there? What can a choking victim not do? People in the chat said talk and cry for help. Okay, so that would be the same thing. What's another one? Thanks, Jenna. You can be my MC. <laughs> uh, people said breathe. Breathe, okay, yep. What's the other one? There's one more. It starts with a C. They can't talk, breathe, and... CO. Cough. <laughs> yes. Good job. So a choking victim cannot talk, cough, or breathe. This is the universal sign. Can you see me doing this? Jenna, can you see me? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. <laughs> I thought you could, but okay. So most people aren't going to go like this specifically, but they are going to clutch their throat because there's an obstruction. Okay. If they're like, ah, I'm choking, okay, they're talking, and if they're talking, they're breathing. They might be sputtering or coughing and, and squeaking out, I can't breathe, okay, they're coughing, they can get air in, and they're talking, they can get air in, okay, but when there is no air going in or out, that is a complete obstruction, and you're going to have to get it out, okay, so as a rescuer, you always need to present yourself and let them know that you're there to help them. Because if you run into a scene where someone's choking and you just grab them around the waist, they might fight against your efforts because they don't know your intention, okay? You're, you, they don't know you from Adam and you now have your hands around their waist, you know, you just gotta be careful. Some people are very particular about being touched. And so you just want them to know that you are there to help. But um, the Heimlich maneuver is what's used typically. And basically you make a fist, okay? And you take your hand and you put your other hand over that fist and you're gonna go in and up right above the belly button, okay? And it's a really quick, fast movement. Um, if they pass out, which does sometimes happen, Then you would do the chest thrust that you would in first aid or, I'm sorry, in CPR, okay? Um, That's going to be their best bet. Always make sure you check, do the three C's first. Um, Check the scene, call 911, and care for the victim, okay? Those are called the three C's. Whenever you come in an emergency scene, you got to check your scene because you don't want to become a victim yourself. Call 911, you're the first line and getting EMS there, and then go back and care for the victim or continue caring for them, okay? So the best thing you can do to prevent a choking incident is to chew your food thoroughly, you know, cut your food up into small bites, um, stay seated while eating. Young kids a lot of times choke because their parents let them roam around eating whatever it is they want. Um, so if they're seated, that's going to be helpful. Can you tell me some foods that typic- that might be typical where young kids might choke? Like what's a food that you can think of that might be considered a choking hazard? Spaghetti. Spaghetti? 
Yet, yeah, the noodles. Cut them up, woman. <laughs> Are you twirling it on your fork until you got like this huge mass? No, I'm just saying like for little or kids. <laughs> okay. All right. I got you. Spaghetti. I'll put that on the list. What's another one? Steak. Okay, because it's kind of hard to chew at times. And yeah, I would agree with that one. What's another one? I think the cat has your old tongue today. What? Think about that. Um, someone said shrimp or small food and hard candy. Ooh, hard candy. That's a good one. Shrimp is kind of soft and pliable, so I wouldn't really think of that one. Um, unless you are trying to eat the whole shrimp whole. Um, peanuts is another one. They're kind of small. Grapes sometimes. Hard candy for sure. Um, the little marshmallows and even sometimes the big ones. You know, you, you have kids and they just aren't paying attention and then zoop, down it goes into the uh, trachea and that can be an issue. Um, oh, it's a peanut butter sometimes. You know, it's for little kids, I'm saying, you know, you, they might get some in their mouth and it's just a big mass and it goes down and it can be a problem. So just be careful. Sometimes even ice, like sometimes I have high schoolers that want to come in and eat ice. And I don't like that because I don't want to have a choking incident on my hands. And I've witnessed too many people choking on ice in my lifetime that I just prefer it not to be done. <laughs> so um, if I've ever said no to you about eating ice, you now know why. Um, anything else that you can think of for choking, like food-wise, that might be an issue? Hot dogs sometimes, if you, you know, cut them up and they're just like those little button sizes. Sometimes for little kids, you know, depending how small they are, it could be an obstruction. It's possible. So, you know, just be mindful as you age and you, you know, have your own kids or babysit or what have you. Um, you know, just FYI. All right. Let's see if you can answer these questions. Uh, one way to prevent falls is to keep floors, floors clean and what? Hello. One way to prevent falls is to keep floors clean and what? Dry. Thank you. Okay, next one. To prevent burns, use oven blank when you handle hot pans. Mitts, oven mitts. Oven mitts, thank you. Uh, you can help prevent cuts if you always cut things on a cutting board. Thank you. And then keep hazardous chemicals. You remember? Here's my chemicals. You got it now? Locked up. Ah, thank you. And then to help prevent shocks, do not play with any blank when you are cleaning an appliance. Do I have to go back to this one? Is it outlets? I would say plugs, outlets, yeah, any of that. Okay. So I got two, two assignments. They're super simple, so don't panic that I'm going to be going kookaberries with you. Okay, so let me get back. All right, so what I'm going to ask you to do for one of your assignments is um, on those slides, hopefully you took a few notes, I need you to come up with five test questions for somebody in this, in this class to answer on that slideshow, okay? Just like I did on the end slides, it can't be any of the ones that I chose, um, but I want you to come up with five questions, test questions, that you could ask somebody about the information I presented today, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you are going to do the demo page, okay? And um, I will, show it show it to you 
Okay, so if you go to culinary and you're in Google Classroom, um, I haven't assigned it yet because I wanted you not to do it without me. So here it is. So if you're on Google Classroom, you can kind of take a peek at that. It's still loading it, so there it goes. Okay, so it says monkey bread video on my YouTube. I did provide the video. Whoa, I did provide the video. So um, the video is here and here, and the demo page is here. And I said, you can make monkey bread and share the video with me. Make sure to use the proper, whoops, sorry. Okay, I said, or, so you can do the demo page, or your parents must be present and approve you using the kitchen. A quick parent cameo and a mascot used in your video is needed. So I just need to see that your parents okayed it. So just like them jumping in on your camera, giving me a thumbs up or something. And then I need some form of a mascot so that I can make sure that the video you're sharing with me is yours. So, you know, if you have anything that, you, you know, that you have at home that you could always be in your videos, that would be like your mascot. Um, you can make monkey bread and share the video with me. You need to make sure to use the proper measuring tools and equipment. Show the ingredients and the amounts that are being used. Be appropriate during the video and show steps throughout the making of the demonstration, okay? In order for you to do that, uh, the actual videoing, you would have to do it now because that I'm giving you class time to work on it. So I need to visually see that you have the materials and that you can go off and do that. Um, otherwise, you're gonna stay here with me and you're gonna watch the video and do the demo until 2.30. Um, but if, you're, if you wanna do the demonstration on your own and videotape yourself, then um, I would need you to go get the ingredients and show me that you have all the materials and then um, I would release you to go videotape, okay? So what you need for this uh, dem demonstration is uh, biscuits, okay? The, the one that are refrigerated, they come in their own like little container and you un take off the label and you smack them and they pop open. You're going to need margarine, cinnamon, and sugar, and I'm trying to think of the third thing. Margarine, to do cinnamon, sugar. That might be it. Um, I used a plastic baggie, but you could use a bowl. That would be fine. Um, I think that's it. So um, check out the um, video, and then you can see... If, you know, if I miss something, I'm pretty sure those are the only ingredients. But um, so if you're going to do the demo on video, go get the materials and show them to me on this camera. And if you're just going to do the demo page, then I ask you to go open the video and work on the demo page and stay here until 2.30 and turn it in. So if you have questions, unmic and let me know. And if you're good to go, just give me a one in the chat so that I know that you understand what I've just said to you, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so just to recap, five questions from the slideshow. Um, you can turn those in with your demo page, that's fine. And then your demo page or you doing the video and showing me on camera right now that you have all the ingredients.
how is everybody doing um, with the demo? Was I right about the ingredients? Cinnamon and sugar, butter, biscuits. What did I miss? Anything? Hello? I feel like I'm talking to myself. Jenna, you always talk to me. <laughs> Sorry, no, I don't think you missed anything. Okay, good. How far are you? Um, I'm almost done with like the ingredients and oh, the, starting with the directions. Gotcha, okay. Excellent. Sorry, Mrs. Zupka, were you hollering for me? Oh, no, I was hollering <laughs> at somebody to talk to me. Oh. Not you specifically. Um, next week, we'll be doing more with safety and sanitation, so just be aware of that. Um, we'll be doing more next week with that. And then I believe your demonstration uh, paperwork is due Friday. So if you, A, weren't here, which you all are, um, or you didn't complete it in the time I gave you, then you'll have till Friday tomorrow at 11.59 to get that into me. So... Just FYI. If anybody ever wants to, you know, show their face and say hello once in a while, that'd be great. I always feel like a lone man out here all by myself on an island where nobody speaks. So just feel free. You got two minutes left, so try to finish up and get it turned in. And if not, make sure you get it done before tomorrow. And if your parents don't know or you didn't tell them, remember parent teacher conferences are this week and next week. So, FYI. Um, Em, I know it's today from 4 to 7, and then next week, Miss Gray, do you know next week's um, conferences? I don't know if she's paying attention. I to that. do, yeah, I do not. I I'm don't not sure. Really yeah, I scheduled all of ours for today, so I'm not sure yeah. what it is for next week. Okay. I'll, uh, um, uh, I'll look and then I'll email it to you, okay? That's not good. All right, everybody. It was great uh, seeing your oval and not your face. Nice talking to those that, like Emily and Jenna, always a pleasure. Miss. Gray, always willing to say hello. <laughs> but um, you guys are out of here. So take care, and I'll see you Monday. Have a good day, Miss Sepka. Thanks, Jenna. Two thirty, guys. You can go. Jordan, Henry, Brian, are you guys there? Hello. Hey, Ms. Zepka, mine won't load. Mine, I have crappy internet. 
Oh, the video? What's not loading, Henry? The video. Uh oh. Um keep trying and if it doesn't work before tomorrow, send me an email and I'll send you the recipe. All right. Oh, okay. And Brian. Are you guys I gotta ask you something real quick? Are you good, Em? Did you uh, figure about figure out the test? I didn't. I think we're just gonna have to try again, and um, because we, Mrs. Gray and I did one today that worked fine. Mm -hmm. So, Matt, are you? Can you tell me if you were using your Penfield account? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know they're gonna. That's one question they're gonna ask me when I put the help desk, and they're gonna be. Was she using her Penfield email? <laughs> yeah. Or could it have or anything? Or? Yeah. Could it have anything to do with it being a pretest rather than a? I don't think so. I make them the same way. I just change the title. Right. I wouldn't think that that would have any. Yeah. That was just weird because yeah, when I got in this morning, I mean, I just clicked on it and <laughs> opened right up. I don't know, but um, um, I would say I'll put I'll put a help desk in and see if they might be able to give me some advice. I was going to see if we could try it again and see if it would work, but um, I guess I don't really want us to waste the time doing that if it's not going to. Yeah. Yeah. Or Mrs. Gray and I could problem solve it because she's in the class, so she could try to open it and then, right. you know, right. see if it works. And if not, then I'll go help desk. And if it does, then yay. Yeah. So yep. I don't know. So do you want me to try opening it now? Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, I can go to it now and see. All right, I'm trying to kick Brian out, but it's not working. <laughs> Let All me right. see. Huh, what do I need to do here? Let me see if I can kick him out. Miss Cray, you might be able to. You okay, yeah, that, that, that didn't work. It's still... Uh... Oh, I closed it. Oh. So hang tight. Thought... Let me... Okay. Let me go see. I'm for some reason I'm on this full screen and I can't get off of it. I don't what I did. Oh my god. What is going on here? Uh, well, I clicked on to remove him, but he's not. He's not going anywhere. Right. Let's see if I can go into. Oh, cool. Other screen. I can't. Should I hit? If I. There we go. I don't know. Go. I can't get it. Am I like, you know, the bar at the, there it goes. Okay, I'm back. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to open that test and then you see if you can open it. Okay. Give me one second here. All right. Lots of culinary. I'm telling you, being in the center of everything is not cool. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed when I got on, I was like, oh, she's in a different location today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was it the pretest for safety and sanitation? I think was so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Still looping, hang tight. All right. Okay. I have an idea of why this isn't working. I'm gonna, well, no, it should still work. Okay, try that. And if that doesn't work, I got one more idea. All right. Oh, whoops, wrong one. I'm like, that opened right up, but no, that's not even the right link. That was uh, the 10 tips of dishwashing. Let me try the right one. <laughs> There it is. It opened? It opened, like, just like that. Opened right up. Oh, my God. That is so crazy. Yeah. That All righty, then. Crazy. All right. Well, Emily, if um, what does your schedule there look like since you're on? Let's see if we can get something set up. I can't do it today because I have conferences for both of my kids here and like yeah, the next. I can't do well, today either. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me look at tomorrow. Tomorrow, 
unfortunately I have appointments that I had pre-scheduled before we got back to school and forgot until I got the reminder call yesterday. So <laughs> yeah, um, I have a student that I'm meeting with tomorrow from one thirty to two thirty. Um, let's see if we waited until next week, would that be okay? Miss Dupka? Oh yeah, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Emily, because I have office hours for culinary on Monday from eight forty to nine forty. If you want to join, then we can do it then. Okay. You want to do that, and we'll just plan on. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Let me make myself a note so that I don't forget, and then you'll email me going, "Where are you?" <laughs> oh, let's see, Emily. All right, so I'll put you on my schedule then for Monday from 8.40 to 9.40, and then okay. um, I'll send you the code. I'll do that right now. I'll send that to you that you just need to join with. Okay. Okay. All right. Then I will plan on seeing you on Monday. All right. All right. Bye, Emily. Bye. Bye. All right. Got that done. Yeah. Boy, I don't envy your internet issues. Yeah. Please. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, fifth hour got right in, no problem. Like it was just quick and it was just easy. I got right in and I'm like, what the heck? I mean, all morning I've been fighting with it and I was just beyond frustrated. And then I put in a help desk and Tammy's like, well, you might need to call Verizon. And I'm like, well, maybe my jet pack is older. Maybe I need to get a newer one. But I guess she said the ones that they have, she goes, well, those are just for students. Staff can't use those. And I'm like, Okay, I normally use my hotspot on my phone, but I couldn't even get that to work. Like I couldn't get my phone to sh I couldn't get my phone to shut off. I couldn't get it to turn back on. It was like everything was just going crazy, and I'm like, well, it's clear out today. Why? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I wonder if it's just you know sometimes when like there's so many people on the internet at one time. Yep. It just bogs it all down, and right. you know, I, it, we're, well, everybody in the United States is on. Yeah, well, and I wonder too because I know freshmen were doing the P PSAT today, oh, and yeah. they said that they would come in probably to fifth hour late. So I wonder if once they all finished up, that's why I got in. Uh -huh. Connor, couldn't, Connor couldn't get on. I mean, you know that he wasn't in your class. He wasn't in algebra one for fourth hour. He did so, make it at the very end, so I was able to give him his assignment and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I heard you talking to him. I'm like, oh, good, he finally got in. I can hear myself. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, it's so frustrating because I just feel like he's missing so much class and then we're spending more time mm -hmm. trying to figure out the assignments when he's not in class to get the full instruction. And like oh. he missed, he didn't miss a quiz, but we didn't know about a quiz last week for biology. Oh no. And she goes, well, I usually announce it in class. I'm like, well, when he can't get into class, I mean. Yeah, I can't and, hear it. And it's hard because our internet, like the connection on the computer or and or on our phones says it's strong and it's a full strength, but we can't get on. That is so crazy. So I'm just, yeah. And so now I, I figured out that there's an error or there's a failure with the DNS server, I guess. Wow. And so I asked Tammy and she goes, you'll have to call Verizon. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm dreading yeah. that. I'm going to need a bottle of wine when I do that. Cause I'll be yeah. on the phone for five hours with them. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. So I, like, I well. finally got, um, I finally got a new modem. Oh, and that now I can get on power school and stuff. Cause I wasn't able mm. to before. Oh yeah. And that sucked, you know, cause then I'd have to go to school just to do grades. Right. And right. So, yeah, yeah, so that helped me, but I don't know that that's your issue. Yeah, I don't know. I just it's so frustrating because the days that it works, it works like flawlessly. And then we've got a day that's clear skies, sun, and I can't get on. 
Oh, you know, I couldn't do anything. Like I was trying to get on with Michael this morning and I couldn't get on and couldn't get on. Then I finally got on and I'm like, I'm waiting, I'm here. And then I said, I'm going to change my meat. Here's the other code, you know, just in case I had kids show up from economics, but I thought he could still get in and I'll still, you know, read him the test and we'll still work on stuff. But, and then I never, I never got him. So I didn't know if he was having issues and, so I let Mrs. Livis know and she goes, well, I've got him on right now. She goes, so when can you do it? And I said, well, what works for him? So he's going to, I'm going to meet with him tomorrow from 1.30 to 2.30. And so I'll just, I'll either text you or email you and let you know yeah. that we need that test open. We'll get that done first. And then I did a Google spread or a Google sheet um, for his warmups. And because he does have um, reduced assignments or reduced amount of work. What I did is I just took one warm up question a week and I just put it on there. And then um, like I even started it because mm -hmm. Ms. Bliva said that he really needs help with. Usually if they just mm -hmm. attempt, if they just attempt it, I give them a point. And, you know, right. like if Brady forgets a period or something, I'm like, you know, right. screw it. It's, right. You know? So I figure what I was going to do is I was so. going to share that with him so that he can at least see it. And mm -hmm. then if he wants me to type his answers, I'll type them in and then we'll just send it to you when we're done. But, um, and I'll probably just share it with you when we're done. But if he does it, then he knows how to probably turn it in or whatever. So, so I figured that's what we were going to do to, um, Friday when I meet with him. Um, so we'll do the test and I don't even know how much of the test he's done so far. Sorry, Connor's getting ice out of the ice maker. I'm like, right, right now. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, I did don't you, know how much of the test he finished. Did you see, um, are you talking about my test? Yeah, um, oh. for Michael for parenting. Oh, Yeah, I don't oh, know how much yeah. of that he finished. So, I have no idea. Yeah. So when he opens it back up, will he be able to see where he left off? That I don't know. Okay. We don't well, if we have to start over, we'll just start over. It's not a big deal. So, <laughs> yeah. who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Um, what was I going to tell you? I don't remember. I was going to tell you something. I forget. Oh, I did you see that my dog got trapped in my cord and ripped my computer <laughs> off my thing? I saw your computer go, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what happened? I thought, did she just fall out of her chair or what? I didn't know. And then you said, sorry, my dog just got all caught up in the cord. Oh, so my like, God. Shoot. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. I was like, where's my computer going? Oh, my God. Yeah. So, all right. Well, no, that's all right. I'm going to see you tonight at um, wherever I put my times right here. I will see you tonight at uh, 610. Is that is that our time is six ten? Yeah. Is it six ten? Oh that's geez, I said. didn't know we did them that late. Oh, that's all right. I didn't. I didn't know I scheduled them that late. But yeah. Well, you know, work. if it doesn't work out, you can talk to me anytime. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I don't remember what time I scheduled everything. So. Yeah. I know. We'll, we'll get it. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll see you at six ten. Yep, we'll be there. All right. See All right. Ya. Bye. Bye.